She says, what do you see? What do you see in these people? I said, oh, they're just adorable. And they're just like two big teddy bears. And it's just, they're so adorable. They're just, they're just like, if I could tell you what their heart is telling me, it's just telling me, love me, adore me just as I am. Uh, you know, just accept me just for who I am. You know, don't buy the, the mask. Don't put any faith whatsoever in the mask. This is what everyone we meet is, is calling out. That inside, they're like this, this, this little child that's like saying, please just love me. You know, I, I'm suffocating because I don't have enough love. I, I want to soak it in. And what a joy for me. I show up and it's like, I know, I know my task is just to love. No judgment whatsoever. No sense of trying to talk to them. The person was just, was like feeling she needed to get into the metaphysics of, of overeating and why you, why, why you overeat and what, you know, try to kind of give the lecture and everything. But she, it, she had the feeling there was no opening for that. Like they, like they would have just looked at her like shocked if she would have even mentioned weight or diet drink or whatever. They would have been horrified. Like, what is she doing in our house, you know? And so, but it was a good experience. Again, for, for Kirsten, I sit down and talk, and I said, no, no, it's, we just, we just were told by Jesus in the Beatitudes, judge not. You know, we don't have to try to figure out this scheme. We just come back to those three steps of forgiveness. Start off with your projection. She was, she was feeling, you know, that she had a lot of conditioning about weight and what that meant to be overweight and, and, and suffering, you know, all of her beliefs of suffering. I mean, all that was going on in her mind and she was projecting it onto them that they were seemingly playing the part, acting it out, as if they trained for the part before she got there. Oh, curse is coming. Let's just jam it down. Put in another extra 50, 60 pounds. Kind of like uh, Robert De Niro did for the, the boxing movie, you know, Jack Dempsey. He had, to, he had to put on all this extra weight. Robert De Niro had to put on a, a big belly, you know, for, for this boxing movie and beef up, do weight training. But they, it's almost like they're just, we're all part of the setup. And then they said, can we turn up the wheezing? <laughs> you know, we can do that, you know, for her. It's really crank it up there, and then, and then she'll really get in touch with her beliefs about health, about what health is. She had to forgive all of her beliefs and concepts on health, and, and open up to the, to the Jesus Christ definition of health, which is inner peace. That's how Jesus des des defines health, inner peace. Yeah. <laughs> that three-step process, when you're looking at your projections, so the movement away from love, you could say that's always caused by judgment, pretty much. So that's mm -hmm. judgment. judgment. It's, it's when the cosmos was, when the Big Bang seemed to happen, and the cosmos was projected out, it was, it was healed instantaneously. It, was, it wasn't even a... It was a... That's how long it took the Holy Spirit to handle the belief in separation. It was just this, this simultaneously handled. That's why the third step is, oh, believe me, the Holy Spirit's not struggling with, with the forgiveness. Of us. And as soon as it's offered over, it's gone instantaneously. It's like a, it's like a little bead of water hitting a hot frying pan. Just, you know, it's gone. It's dissolved. It's evaporated. The instant that drop of water hits that hot frying pan, it's gone. So, so that's important to realize in the sense that um, if there must be some kind of judgment, and, and the, the ego invented judgment of taking the cosmic explosion of images, we could say, the cosmos, and then making hierarchies, arranging the images into preferences or constellations, uh, based on judgment. You know, that's what judgment is, is to, to make a hierarchy of illusions, thereby uh, completely wiping out the idea that it's all one illusion. It just, it, that's what preferences and judgments do. They, they make a hierarchy of what is all the same. So then Jesus comes along and 
he seemed to not buy into that hierarchy. The lame could walk, the blind could see. Uh, what do we got here? Palsy, no problem. Leprosy, no problem. Oh, here's one that uh, has demons. <laughs> it's got demons in it. Okay, no problem. Depart. You know, uh, we have a cold. We have, you know, epilepsy. You know, it just doesn't matter what the, the problem seemed to be to Christ, they were all the same. They were all the same illusion, ego. And, and he had overcome the belief in the ego. So that's why it didn't really matter. Even that one story of the woman who comes up and she just touches the hem of his garment from behind. He goes, oh, who touched me? And, and she's made whole just from touching the hem of his garment because he's just radiating this sense of all of oneness and love and, and innocence. And, and there is no problem that can enter into that. So what a great calling when you think about this is the calling of your life, is to just <laughs> join with, with that same essence, that same Christ mind. What a great calling. You couldn't possibly have a higher calling than to do that. And forgiveness is the process we're working with. It's simply not, you're not just denying the reactions that happen. You know, you're just like a good psychotherapist. The reactions that seem to happen would what be what we would call in psychotherapy the presenting problem. The therapist always listens to the patient give the presenting problem. And usually it's, it's through invitation. Tell me about yourself. The therapist. Open-ended questions. Open-ended questions. Tell me about yourself. And then, then come the presenting problems. And there may be quite a lot of presenting problems. And, we, and when you're working with the patient, you never go for the jugular. You know, if they seem to have like a major issue with their mother or their father, you know, you can work on other issues and, and have some gains uh, where they start to loosen from, from those hurts and grievances to come towards the, the central problem. And it's the same with, with, uh, with us when we're working with people. You, you, if you go for the ego, if you go for the jugular, uh, it's, it's like that, that clip we saw called The Thaw, when um, some of you might not have seen the whole movie, but Captain Janeway basically tries to remove the environment from the ego, tries to take away the whole artificial environment. And it's fine until the ego notices that it's happening. And then it's like a red alert. <coughs> you know, all defenses come up and, and she, they have to shut down the attempt because the ego is too threatened. So the Holy Spirit has to work very carefully with the mind in dismantling and dispelling the ego, starting with the presenting problems, bringing it back. And Susan's right. Jesus, if Jesus had just come here and said, uh, "This world is an illusion." Good afternoon. Good evening. <laughs> and poof, it just disappeared. It wouldn't have made much of a murmur. Like, so a couple people might have just went, there's a crazy man here. And it was an apparition. Uh, he was just here for a couple minutes and he said this crazy thing. The world's an illusion. Then he said good afternoon, good evening, and good night. He took a bow and poof, he was gone. Uh, okay, what, what are you having for dinner? <laughs> you know, it's like, no, Jesus took three years of public ministry to really say there's something here at the core that we've got to get at. Why would he have told all those parables? Why would he have been so patiently to sit with people at, at their dinner time and go, and when they came in from the fields, to relax, to kind of, in a friendly, respectful way, say, talk about these things. And even when he did that, it was still deep. I mean, it was deep for the apostles. Most of them were fishermen. And they're not used to getting into such deep metaphysics, you know. And he was telling lots of parables to try to make it as understandable as possible. And that's what I've tried to do with my life, is I just tell the parables, respond to people as they question, you know, kind of meet them right where they're at uh, as best as I can, and then and keep coming at it from different angles, and then, uh, and then publish it to the world. Put it all over the internet. Uh, uh, oh, I hear YouTube's hot. Okay, good. I'll start doing YouTube's or MySpace or they give you free uh, space on there. Mm -hmm.